Welcome to VPI Documentaries, a video series as part of the Federal Highway Administration's Everyday Counts Virtual Public Involvement Program. This video features Massachusetts Department of Transportation's use of VPI committee and trainings to reach a broader audience. Hi, I'm Andrew D'Amato. I'm Assistant Secretary for Mass DOT. My name is Hong Pham. I have been with Mass Dot since 2016 and I soon became a project manager and from there I was introduced to this uh, great opportunity with uh, VPI and being a producer. My name is Charlene Joe. I've been with MassDOT for 19 years and I originally started in internal audit and here I am today as an OPO, Office of Public Engagement Outreach Coordinator. Well, the genesis of virtual tools and techniques actually preceded the pandemic. We had a cross-section of departments working on accessibility standards. The secretary brought me in to help do more streamlining of processes across the organizations to have better business practice and connections with communities. Massachusetts is one of the few states that did not stop designing constructing during the pandemic, which meant that we needed to continue to engage the public using virtual tools, which we had not done so before. The core goal is to present our projects to the public in the most concise and meaningful way. Through the VPI process and the work that we've been able to do with virtual engagement and the Office of OPO and the coordinators is that we're actually able to reach a broader audience. The biggest benefit, I think, is to the public. They have an easy way of accessing us. They don't have to travel and we've seen our numbers and participation grow significantly as a result. Flexibility. It allows the public to join at any time when it is convenient for them. It's uh, been a real cost savings. We've taken the administration of public engagement in-house. So we've taken a big load off consultants, which has saved us a lot of money and time and saved them a lot of money and time. And the last thing is by controlling the platform, we control the data. So we have surveys that go out about how did you hear about this? And how did you enjoy being with Zoom? And did you have a good experience where you heard, was the interpreter working for you? And every meeting and hearing that we have has an automatic survey that goes out. And we've been collecting that data and tracking it ever since. The first thing we did once we realized we had to get the meetings going, we needed to recruit people and train people on an incredibly accelerated basis to produce meetings. So it was always, and it still is, on a volunteer basis. We looked for anybody that was interested in learning how to be a producer and got them into a formal training program that we were developing as we were recruiting. So we developed two levels of training materials. We developed what we call fondly the 100 series, which is the basic legal requirements, accessibility tools and techniques. And then we had a series called the 200 series, which was very much focused on the platforms. So for producers, they're required to do training in what we call the Learning Hub, where all of our training materials are stored, the 100 and the 200 series, videos, et cetera. They are also then required to shadow a number of meetings that are going on so they can see what the actual experience is doing it. Then they have to co-produce a meeting, and then they have to produce a meeting. And when they produce a meeting, the project manager has to respond back to us and tell us whether they thought they were ready to go fly solo from here on in. And then the final thing we do is we Zoom test them before we, we let them go into the world. We give them a test to make sure they understand the different functionalities and they can execute them seamlessly. My name is Hong Pham. I will be your Mass DOT producer this evening, along with Shami Job, who will be helping me facilitate Q&A at the end of the presentation. Once the producers have completed all their training, I've got the information from the project manager saying they're good to go, and they've completed their Zoom test, we go back to HR and we certify them. And the beauty of that is it goes on their employment record. We've been able to recruit up to a high of 16 producers. 
we're at around 12 now. We like to be between 10 and 14 because as we've evolved, we have found great benefit to having two producers per meeting, particularly if they're like project information meetings and the engagement's gonna be dynamic. And if you have a breakout room or you're having chats with hand raises, it's always good for them to be able to divide out the tasks. Two producers, they are from different departments as well. And being from different departments, they are not trained in looking at highway plans and from the highway perspective and ideas. So that brings a lot of value to the project when presenting to the public because they present different ideas and different perspectives. The role of the coordinator is to, to support. We're here to support our project managers, our producers, and also the public as well. And we want to just make sure that we have the right tools, the language and accessibility services provided for them to join in our hearings and meetings. So one of the things that we look for, we want to make sure that the presentation is clear. We're also making sure that the language used, it's understandable, it makes sense. Sometimes it can be a little bit technical. So we try to let the project manager and their team know that Time out, guys. Can you just make this a little more clear so the public, again, will be able to understand this information? We're developing training materials using that VPI committee, and they vetted all the materials we trained. So the law department would get a section, HR would get a section, IT would get a section, and we call together PowerPoint training materials. So we chose to build a VPI committee because we needed the resources and expertise of multiple departments. The VPI group functions as a quasi board for us and they continue to function. We're still working on a host of issues. They're helping us make sure that our approach, our training and our tools are consistent across modes. There's not one set of trainings that we do because we're working so much with different departments, different projects, we go to the highway con conventions trainings to kind of meet the other groups, like the consultants who are also working with the project managers. So we're also learning about improving our techniques in reaching the other communities. Really frame your whole program and your process around collecting data. Data is incredibly important. It helps you understand what you're doing well and what you're not doing well. Always have a plan B and um, plan to fail and then uh, utilize that plan B uh, as an after effect. Basically bring of a, of a more human experience to your meeting and not just a robotic person reading off of a script. You can't work in this space if you're change adverse because change is a daily, daily reality. And being able to embrace that change and understand and vet it properly to make sure that you really have a full understanding of the advantages and potential disadvantages to whatever method, process, tool, or technique is really important. You have to constantly demonstrate that you're trustworthy and that's not a given. So being accountable, being transparent, and being honest, owning up to mistakes, reconciling those errors, is very, very important to getting trust and maintaining trust. And it's not just with the public, it's with our partnering organizations and it's with our own departments. So being honest about things and saying, hey, yeah, that didn't work so well. Uh, help us figure it out and regroup. And we have found that to be a winning strategy and an important one.